All right, today we are going to move on to, we're still reviewing chapter three and four, but we're going to move on to day two. If you would please take out your red pen and go ahead and fill in those two blanks for me. Okay, so this is what it says. The number outside the parentheses is multiplied by everything on the inside of the parentheses. So we've got this little example up there. What letter is on the outside of the parentheses? A. A is. So I want you to take your red pen and simply go from the A to the B. So I would have to multiply A times B, but also take your red pen and put a little arrow over there. You have to multiply by everything on the inside of the parentheses, so you'd also have to multiply A times C. All right. Hopefully this is going to come as a review to you from what we learned way back in chapter three. This particular section, if you want to off to the side, go ahead and just write a little 3.3 because this did come from section 3.3. So if you wanted to go back and watch the full lesson, you could hear it in section 3.3. All right. So if you would take your pencil, this is the way to kind of show me work that you understand what we're doing. Guys, what number is on the outside of the parentheses? A five. So take this. What is 5 times 2x? 10x. 10x. Directly underneath it, I want you to put the 10x. Now, what is 5 times positive 5? 25. We're multiplying, so it wouldn't be a 10, it'd be 25. Now, is it positive or is it negative? Positive. So remember, you always have to have a plus or a minus in between those terms, and that would be your final answer. Okay? Let's go on to the next one. Aubrey, what number is outside the parentheses? Three. So we're going to multiply. Everyone show me with your pencil. Three times four Y. Aubrey, what's that answer? Twelve Y is correct. Then we're not finished. What is three times positive two? Six. Positive or negative? Positive. positive six. So that's the correct answer. Aubrey, go ahead and bump it off for someone to help us with problem C. All right, Zion, this one's a little bit more difficult. Why do you think this would be considered more difficult than A and B? Because there's a negative number. But we've learned these rules, so we should be fine. Zion, if you have a negative times a positive, what will your answer always be? Negative. It will be negative, okay? So, Zion, what is negative 4 times positive x? Negative 4x four. Four is correct. Now we still have to take that negative 4 and multiply it times positive 6. What is negative 4 times positive 6? Negative 24, because remember, if you have an odd amount of negative signs, your answer will always be negative. Any questions for Zion on that one? Okay, let's go on to the next one. Zion, would you bump it off for someone to help us with problem D? All right, Chris, let's look at this first part. What number is on the outside of the parentheses? Negative one. Negative one third. So Chris, we're going to take a negative and multiply it times a positive 3n. Will this be a negative or will this be a positive? It is going to be a negative. Now, off to the side, I am going to take 1 third and multiply it times 3. You could say 3 over 1. When you do that, Christopher, what do you get? 1 over 1. 1 over 1, okay, which just equals what? 1. Now, you already told me it was going to be negative, so we know it's negative 1. And what family was that? The n family, negative 1n. I'm not quite finished yet. I still have to multiply negative third times negative 6. Is that going to be a positive or a negative? Positive. It will be a positive because when you have an even amount of negative signs, your answer is always positive. Now, off to the side, what is a third of 6? 2 is correct. So then we're just going to be adding 2. Any questions for him on how he did that one? Um. All right, so the question was, could I just put a negative n? Yes, you do not have to have that 1 there. It could just be negative n plus 2, or you can have the negative 1 there. Either one, it means the same thing. Okay, let's look at the next one for problem E. Now we're dealing with a decimal, okay? Addison, if I am multiplying a negative times a positive, what's my answer going to be? It has to be a negative, all right? So off to the side, let's just multiply 1.5 times 8. Class, 5 times 8? 0 on bottom, 4 on top. 1 times 8? Plus 4? 12. So we get 12.0. How can I simplify that? 12. Just make it a 12, okay? Because we can get rid of that 0 .0 part right there. Now I have negative 12, but when we multiplied there, what was that family? Uh, 
That is the M family. Okay. Now I'm not quite finished. I still have to multiply this on the outside by everything on the inside. So if I multiply that by this over here, I have a negative times a negative. What will that be? A positive. So guys, what is negative 1.5 times negative N? 1.5, but what family is that in? That is in the N family. Can those two be combined? No. No, they are in different families, so that is our final answer. I want you guys to try problem F on your own. All right, so let's look at what we've got here. A negative times a positive. What does that have to be? A negative. A negative. So I've got negative 1x. Once again, you can keep the 1 there, or you don't have to keep the 1 there. Now I have to multiply negative 1 times positive 9. What's the answer? Negative nine. All right, so there's an idea here that I want to just remind you of. What it says here, and I want you to write this with your red pen, is combine the like terms before using the distributive property. So what you could do is you could see, oh, here's a negative three on the outside. So I would have to multiply it by that and by that and by that. But instead, those parentheses, according to PEMDAS, says, do me first. So we're going to see if there's any work that I can do inside the parentheses first. Notice, there are two constants. That's a number that stands alone. And then we've got our variable term. So we're going to combine those things first, okay? The number on the outside is negative 3. Now, order is important at this point. What should I always do first? The variable term or the constant, the variable. the variable term. What's my variable term here? 2x. 2x. So let's just drop down that 2x. Now we're going to combine these things that we've underlined. Girls, what is negative 1 plus 7? Okay, uh, no, no, same sign or different sign? Same, same different sign. Different sign. Subtract and take the sign of the larger number. So it would be positive 6. Now we have a problem that looks similar to the ones that we've been working out. First things first, let's multiply the number on the outside times that first number right there. Lexi, what is negative 3 times positive 2x? Uh, negative 6x. Negative 6x is correct. I'm not finished. I still need to multiply this number times that second term. Gerard, what is negative 3 times positive 6? Negative 18 is correct. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right, so do you guys see any like terms inside of those parentheses? Four and negative three. Four and negative three. If you guys would, I want you to underline that four and the negative three, and then that three Y is all by himself. Let's drop the things down. Kaylin, when you drop it down, what does it look like now? Excellent. Notice that she put the variable term first. Okay, Kaylin, would you like to distribute it for us? Um, 2 times 3y is 6y, and then keep the plus, then 2 times 1 is 2. All right, 6y plus 2 is correct. Any questions on how we did that section? All right, the next ones people would say are kind of tricky because there's negatives, there's fractions, there's decimals, but I want you guys to at least try it. So if you and your partner would go ahead, I want you to try these last two problems together. Okay, so we're going to go over the answers. If you begin to see, oops, I did not get that right, I just want you to erase it and fix it so you've got it correct in your notes, okay? First things first. What is on the outside of the parentheses that needs to get distributed? 1.5, negative 1. Negative half, okay, because we're doing problem I. Oh. A negative times a positive. Negative. Negative, okay. Guys, what is half of 6n? 3n, and you said the answer was negative. Now we need to multiply negative half 
times positive 4? Yeah. Guys, what's a negative times a positive? Negative. It is a negative. And what is half of 4? Two. 2. What do I still need to bring down? Plus 2n. Plus 2n. Now, this is what I saw. Some people, they were really proud of themselves, and they boxed in the answer. What's wrong with that? It's not. It's, it's still on, there's two things. There's, the same thing. there's so still the some question. like terms that are up there. That's a lot of this is the n, that is the n. This is the constant that stands alone. So let's combine right now these n families. All right, guys, when we combine those two, what is negative 3n plus 2n? Negative 1n, and then bring down your minus 2. Now, I did see some people who didn't have this negative 1 there. That's okay as long as you have the negative, okay? Either way is fine. You can keep the one or you can take it out. Raise your hand if you got that on your own. All right, very good, okay? Now this next one, I think I only found one person that had it correct. So let's look at it. First things first. Is there anything I need to do with that first number right there? No. no. Not right now. So let's just drop it down. 3.5m simply comes down below. Next, there is something that needs to happen. What needs to happen with this negative 1.5? I have to distribute it. Because it's a number on the outside of the parentheses, it needs to get multiplied by everything on the inside of the parentheses. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the negative 1.5 times m. Guys, what's negative 1.5 times m? Yeah. Very good. Negative 1.5 m. Am I finished? No. no, that negative 1.5 is on the outside of the parentheses, which means it also needs to be multiplied by everything on the inside of the parentheses. So I have a negative times a negative. What will the answer be? It's going to be a positive. So if you don't know this already, just off to the side, 1.5 times 10. Okay, so you should know that if you're multiplying a number times a 10, you simply just move the decimal point over once. So what would the answer be? 15, okay? So it's plus 15. Am I finished now? No. No. What do I need to do? Um, like terms. You're right. Subtract by combining those like terms. So now I have 3.5, and I need to subtract 1.5. When you do that, what do you get? 2. 2. What family is that? 2M. 2M. And what do I do with the plus 15? Bring it down. How many of you would say you got that correct? All right. Christopher was my one who got it. Christopher, come on up and grab a candy. All right, guys. Tonight's homework is final review number four, and it is found on Big Ideas.